people prefer to join companies because of transaction costs. Um, it, it, it reduced the, cons the transaction cost at that moment. Then um, jo uh, Jochai Benkler, he reviewed that uh, thesis and, under, and, and uh, when he was reviewing that thesis, he was analyzing a new phenomenon at that time. And that new phenomenon was the open source software development. And he concluded that that new um, uh, phenomenon was changing again the way that companies work, the incentive of the companies and, and the incentive of the people to join or not companies. And uh, so with the, with the open source movement, we had tens of thousands of developers around the world joining products and, and, and projects and, and collaborating. And the result of that movement was a super innovative and productive uh, collaboration. And so people were not joining companies anymore. They were just following social signals and, and were responding to a different set of motivations. Um, today, we believe that the open source movement, together with the open blockchain, are changing those incentives again are changing the way companies are, are um, operating again. And that is um, building the base of these new generations of, of organizations uh, such as uh, Aragon. So uh, I want to just tell you the, character the current characteristics of these new projects and organizations that are, are starting. So one of the, co and, and, and these are common, common characteristics, um, the, the, the first characteristic is the organizational structure. So today, we, the, the, the blockchain technology is not mature, so we somehow need to operate. And that way of operation is through um, legal foundation. So in Aragon, for example, we have our foundation is incorporated in Estonia. And that foundation is the, one, is the owner of the rights and obligations of the project. Um, it's a non-profit organization. It serves like a, an umbrella and, and is the responsible for the development of the, of the project and is the responsible for the funds of the project. So we, we had a token sale, um, a token distribution of the project in May and the, the money we raised, um, it's, under, it's under the ownership of the, of the foundation. But the way we do it is like we, those funds are within a smart contract that we call it multisig, and for the ones that, that don't know what a multisig is, it's a contract that needs the signatures of two out of three people, three out of four, it, has, it can have different combinations. In our case, is the, for, for any movement of, of the funds in that contract, we need two signatures out of three, and one, the two signatures are the signatures of the, of the founders, and the third signature is the signature of another contract, which is, we call it the, the multi-signature, the community multi-signature. And, and so within that contract, we have participants um, of the community that, that, um, that we need to, uh, in case of, a example, for example, a disagreement between the founders, we, they could help us to, to solve deadlocks, you know? And, um, and, and so this multi-signature structure right now it's very important for us. Can you hear me? It's very, it's very important for us to provide security of the funds and to provide trust to the token holders. So, so in that way, it's not that the founders are going to be doing whatever they want to do with the funds. Um, we, in the next couple of, of weeks, uh, we want to make that um, multi-signature contract public Right now it's public and you can go to our repo on GitHub and link on the, on the address and look at the different transactions. The, thing, the problem today is that it's not like human readable and, and doesn't have a lot of um, uh, description. So we are building a user interface so people can go there, click there and, and, and look at um, in, a, in a web and see all the transactions that are coming out of, of that contract that has the funds of our project. And, and, and the description and the destination and the date. Um, for us, um, open blockchains are about self-regulation. Transparency needs to be a must for these projects, and we want to lead that, that example. 
um, the foundation um, also it's the I don't want to. I want to 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 say it in a way. It's like the employer of the of the of the core development team, and so we serve the foundation and 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 the foundation and 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 the team we are leading, the governance the governance of the project right now. So the foundation is like a kind of governance entity, a, a leader, and and we have to take the lead on the on the experimentation of different governance models um, and, and, and the research we want to fund, we want to use part of our fund as well to fund research on, 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 on different governance models, different voting schemes, different channel communications for these projects. Um, another characteristic is the community. You know, today everybody talks about the community, the Bitcoin community, the Ethereum community. These projects, these new genera um, companies, also have communities, and, and that community is a super important part of of, of our our project. In in Aragon, we feel that they are like standard part of our team, so they help us a lot, um, and uh, and they are the representation of the governance of the project. They are the ones that are going to own the future of the development of the project. Right now, we have to. We have to lead the, the how would I say? We have to lead the way on on how we come up with ideas to build up a participatory community. So, I I want to to point out that a lot of the things that we are doing, nobody has done them. You know, so so we have to experiment, and and for that experimentation, we have to start off chain. So right now we don't we we. Our network, the Aragon network, that I will explain later on what it is, um, it doesn't exist yet and it's not deployed on the blockchain, but we want to start working with the community for them to participate in decisions on, on the future of the project right now without with off-chain, off without the need of, of being on, on, on the blockchain. Um, and, and, um, and at the end, uh, always having in mind that the future, the future, the end goal of this project is for that, um, for that governance to be fully decentralized and fully on-chain, but we have to start somewhere. This is a step-by-step -step process. The token, so, and I want to point this out as well, not every project and not every product needs a token. However, um, a project such as, as Aragon, we are trying to build a network and one, we want to build like a mini economy within, within Aragon. We really need a token. We need a token to use it as a way to incentivize, as a way to, to build up a viable business model for the, for the network. And so the token enhances the economic ex uh, incentive of the users of a project of a product and those users they have ownership on the product those users um, um, they are token holders another characteristic of the token is that um, it, it, the, it should be that the token is a very key feature of the product it shouldn't be that it's only a mechanism to 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 funding and that's the case that we are seeing today, uh, uh, projects without any product and, or, or without any business plan, um, just issuing tokens in order for, to recollect, um, to, to raise money and, and start building the, the, the product. And, and that shouldn't be the case. The case should be that the, the token has a, a key usage within the network and within the product. Um, another characteristic of the of the of the token is that it aligns incentive, and you know the company, the traditional companies in the in in, in, in the world today, sometimes the, the incentive of the participant of the of the shareholders of the management team, those incentives are not al aligned. I, I saw it as a lawyer, corporate lawyer. Um, this token, the, the it's going to align those incentive. Everybody want the product to to be used. Everybody want um, to increase the value of the token, to increase the value of the usability of the product. 
and, and, and so the result is that everybody will win at the end. Um, the network. It's another characteristic of, 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 of this project. What is the network in the case of Aragon? The network in the case of Aragon is a decentralized autonomous organization whose pr uh, purpose is to be, to act as a digital jurisdiction. We want to, to be a, a jurisdiction for companies to manage, to, for, for, this, for the management of these new companies, of these new organizations. We want to make it easy for investors, for entrepreneurs, and for organizations to operate within the blockchain world. Um, that network is just a, a set of rules that are writing within the smart contracts. Those set of rules um, can be amended by the governance of the network. And the governance of the network, the, the holders of that governance are the token holders, the community. Um, they are the ones that are going to take decisions on chain when that network is deployed. We are planning to deploy the network, the smart contracts on the, on the, on the blockchain next year. Um, we don't have a specific date yet. And, um, and once that network is deployed, what is going to happen in Aragon is that right now the foundation has the funds that we raised in the, in the, in the token cell. Those funds are going to pass, are going to be transferred to the, to, the, to the network. But again, this is a step by step process. Uh, it's not that we deploy the, the network today and tomorrow, it's, everything is decentralized. We have to try the technology, we have to experiment, we have to, to, to approach different models to, to find the most efficient model. And so with the, in, in the most secure way, we don't want that things like the DAO happen again. Um, so once this is uh, deployed in the, on the blockchain, we are going to continue with our method uh, or um, with our off-chain method. So at some point we will have off-chain together with on-chain governance, but also, like I said before, with the end um, goal on our mind of this fully decentralized on-chain governance in the future. Um, what else can I say about the network? Um, yeah. The network is going to provide initially mainly three services to the participants in the network. Once the first service is the, develop, the ongoing development of the um, core smart contracts of Aragon. Those core smart contracts are the contracts that, that the, the DAOs need to, to, to run on the blockchain. The second service is at the, a decentralized court. We we cannot eliminate the human element of this new technology and problems are going to arise. And we want to, for the organizations to have an easy way to solve those projects or, or at least a most easy, more easy way and, 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 and more um, dynamic. Uh, and, the, and the third service is the, is the upgradability of a smart contract. Everybody knows that when a smart contract is deployed on a blockchain, it's immutable. So it's, it's, it's diff however, we, we found out, I mean, the community as a whole, of ways of updating those contracts. So we are going to provide those, those services for, for people that, that don't want to get better with the, with the, with the technology. And, and to close, so what we want, what is um, our mission in Aragon? Our mission in Aragon is to provide the tools for this new generation of projects to, to, to manage those projects. We want to build the tools for those, for those projects to, to use it to manage the, the teams, their funds, um, to, manage, to, to manage the governance within the project. So today we have decentralized, uh, semi-decentralized projects that are focused on, on a different thing, like are, are focusing on, on prediction markets, are focusing in decentralized um, exchange, are focusing on decentralized marketplaces. We want to provide the tools for those projects, to, for the governance of those projects, and for the management of those projects, so they can, they can really concentrate in their mission, and their own mission. And, and for us, it's super important. I mean, the, the, first, the first stage we are going to, our target is, the, is blockchain projects, this new kind of organization. But in the future, we want 
that everybody, we want this technology to be usable for, by anyone, even if you understand or don't understand um, blockchain or smart contracts. We really believe that in the future, people are going to be using open blockchain, are going to be using tokens, even if they don't know how that works. And, and um, yeah, the one last thing. So the fully decentralized autonomous organizations are coming. We, the, the technology is not there yet. We, we are on the, on, the, on the process of making it. And, and I want to close the, the, the talk with, uh, with a phrase of um, a, a quote of Naval Ravi, Ravikan. He is a te tech influencer in, in America. And he says, Laws, law follows society, society follows technology, technology follows science, and new science will create fully decentralized autonomous organizations for governance, for prediction markets, for decentralized exchanges. We will see that happen. <laughs>